Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 tips in Lightroom and 10 tricks that you never even knew existed that can help your photography business and help any hobbyist photographers as well. Let's go. All right, Lightroom is a super powerful editing tool that photographers are using, but how can you use it to the max potential? How can you find every little trick of the trade that's gonna help you get better photographs? Well, this video is gonna take you through the top 10 tips, things you may not have known that Lightroom can do for your photography. So let's go ahead and get over to the computer and find these tips in Lightroom. Go ahead and get a pen out to take notes because you might want to go through these again to find everything that Lightroom can do for your photography and go. All right, guys, now that we're on our computer screen, we're really going to look at these 10 things in Lightroom that you never knew about that you could use to make your edits that much better. So we're going to start in the develop module and all you have to do to get there is hit your D key on your keypad or you can touch the develop module button up here. Let's start with this car photograph and we're just going to go to develop and it's going to pull up all of our developing options that we have in Lightroom. The first thing is changing your background to develop photos. That is your first tip that you may not have known about in Lightroom and all you have to do is hover over the background and right click and you have many different options that you have in Lightroom. White, light gray, medium gray, dark gray, darker gray, and black. Depending on how you usually edit your photographs, you can choose your background. So since I usually underexpose all of my edits, I have my background set to white so that I purposefully overexpose them more than I normally would to make all the colors burst out and impact the photograph better. If you have a tendency to overexpose, you can use something like a darker gray to help you on that as well. It's just your visual idea of what this photograph actually looks like when you export it or print it for your own good. So I'm gonna leave mine on white, and that is the first tip that you may not have known about in Lightroom. The next tip, we're going to stay in the develop module and we're going to be using targets to edit our photographs. Now, targets are these little buttons right here. So I'm in the tone curve right now, but they're also represented in the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders over here on the right side. And those really help you out a lot. Let's say that you want to edit the shadows in this photograph, but you may not want to use a slider. All you have to do is select this little target and you can hover over any part of the photograph that you want to adjust and click and drag up or drag back down. And it will also impact the tone curve if you look at the right hand of your screen as I adjust this, and it will also impact the slider as well. You can use this with any part of the photograph that has these targets available to help you edit your photographs better if you just see a specific part of the photograph that you want to adjust using the targets. Staying still in the develop module of Lightroom, we have our third thing we can use to impact our photographs. This is the blue primary saturation slider. And this slider is really beneficial and I gotta be honest, I don't know exactly how it works since I'm only using the blue primary saturations, but if you increase this slider, it really shows you a lot of the tones within your photographs. It works really, really well with blues and yellows in the photograph, and it just makes the colors in the photo pop a little bit more. I always adjust the blue primary saturation slider after I finish with all of my other edits in the develop module to give my photographs just that much more boost in their colors. And like I said, it works really, really well with blues and yellows. So if you have a lot of those in your photograph, those will come out the most using the slider. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is camera calibration in Lightroom, and you stay in the develop module to do this. A lot of times in the metadata of your photograph, it holds what kind of lens you were using and what kind of cameras you, you were using. But you can set this up to different types. You can load different camera calibrations into your Lightroom, and you have all of these different options from the drop down of different things you can choose 
to help you bring out the most of your photograph, you can really just scroll through these and try to find the best one that would fit your image. I usually stick with Adobe Standard, but it's a good thing to scroll through and look for in your Adobe camera calibration for Lightroom. Another really helpful tip that we have in Lightroom is the compare view tool and that really, really helps me when I'm making edits. So let's just run through and make a few edits that I think would make this photograph a little bit better, adding contrast, a little bit more yellow, lifting my shadows just a bit, adding some clarity, vibrance, and maybe a little bit of saturation. So we've just made some really basic adjustments to this photograph really, really quick. So what if I want to see the improvements that I've made and I can't really visualize it and picture it against the photograph that I imported originally, the raw file that we imported? Well, I can hover down here at this before and after view and just click on it and it'll bring up the adjustment on the right and the imported raw file on the left. So it shows me by before and after of edits that I've actually made. Really, really good way to see what you've actually improved in the photograph and maybe some things that you wanna dial back and get back to the original raw file so that your photograph remains realistic to the viewer. But this is a great tool to use as you go through the editing process. Okay, so we've got five down, we have five more to go. What if you want to add a little style to your Lightroom panel and you want to add your own personalized nameplate like I have up in the top left part of the screen? Well, that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is right click and go to edit identity plate and it brings up this new window that you can use to personalize your Lightroom and really show people that you have this extra flair that maybe other people don't have. You can locate a file, you can create like a PNG in Photoshop and bring that in, maybe scribble down a signature and have that ID up on the top left part of your screen and you can also adjust the fonts of your different modules up here in the top right. Really cool way to edit your Lightroom to really personalize it and make it pop for those special clients that you have. Okay, so since we talked about personalization, what does that really do for your photographs? Well, a really good way to show off your personalization is using web galleries. And this is really, really good if you have like a portrait session that you've had for a while that you really wanna show someone all of the images they can get. You can create actual custom HTML web galleries for your clients. All you have to do is in the left side in your folders tab, just select the folder you want. Say I want all images in 2017. I just go over here to the web galleries button over here and it will actually create a gallery with all of these different tabs that people can go through and see every single photo in their file that you've taken and they can actually pick and select. The really cool thing about this is you can go through and edit what these actually look like so you can keep with like a simple gallery um, where it's just like tabs that they can look at or I personally like the track gallery templates that allow people to see all of the photographs fully in their files whatever those may be really really cool so all you have to do you can edit all of this uh, information up here at the top you can rename whatever gallery you want to rename it and then you just click create web save gallery you can name it uh, you have all these different options you can use the best part about this is you can go in and make changes to these photographs and the changes will go back to that web gallery so maybe somebody says can you remove this spot on the lens in this photo and let me see how I like it well, you can go into your Lightroom and change that, and it will also change on the web gallery as well. Really solid tool for portraits or if you have a client waiting on a lot of files. All right, well, let's go back to our library tab so we can see the next tip that we have and actually go into the develop module again. And what we have here is we can go in and what we can do when we're in the develop module is go in and see all of our basic changes up here in the histogram that we've made. A special tip that we can use with the histogram is actually seeing in the photograph where all of our blown outs are in the photo or blacks are in the photograph. And these are helpful if you can't 
exactly see what's going on in the histogram. All we have to do is hit the J key and it will show us Red will be all of our blown out parts of the photograph and blues will be where all the blacks are. Now you can zoom in and it'll probably bring up more blacks or we can like bring down the black slider and we'll probably see more blue highlights coming up that we have within the photograph. So the blues represent all the blacks reds represent all of the blown out parts of your photograph that helps in the editing process so you can see exactly where blown out parts are if you have too much too little whatever you want to do to make the photograph really really good it's a great tool to use and to make them go away you just hit the j key again and those will disappear all right number eight thing in lightroom that you may not have known about is all about organization now organization is a huge part of Lightroom that makes it stand alone in the editing process so let's say you find photographs you like and you want to organize those into your favorite versus least favorite well you can just select images say the one we have selected right here and hit the number five key on your keypad that shows Lightroom that you, that is your favorite thing to do and you can use any number that you want it goes up to five stars but you can hit the four set rating to four let's say you want to make this one a three set it to three now in the filtering of Lightroom you can come down here to go to rated and select that and those will show up in your rated photographs only let's say you want to set this rating to a five star well now only my five star images are represented goes down to four stars three stars two stars and now we can just set it to one star or you can turn your ratings completely off it is a great great way to organize your photographs and set it up to where you can spend time editing your most favorite versus your least favorite in your Lightroom workflow when you're working with a lot of different images at one time you can also do this with our number nine tip of things to do in Lightroom using keywording so you can actually add keywords to a photograph let's say you want to keep with this photograph right here let's say you want to add this to cars and add that keyword to your list so now you have a keyword set right here and you can actually search through your photographs based on keywords so let's say you have a lot of photographs of waterfalls well, you can keyword all of those waterfall images with the keyword waterfall or a location, anything you want to use to help organize that in your Lightroom workflow so you can go through those images really quickly and edit those images quickly based on the keywording that they have. Another really cool editing feature and organizational feature that you may not have known about is our number 10 tip of things in Lightroom that you may not have heard of and that is the painter right here. It's a little spray paint can in the bottom of your screen and if you select that it shows up on your screen as a spray paint can that you, when you hover over those images and you can actually s select what you're going to spray on this photograph so let's say I want to spray a flag on this photograph well all I have to do is click a flags placed and I'm just placing flags all over the place at this point and then up here in the filters you can come down here to flagged images and it has selected those out. All of your images that you spray painted with a flag on your image uh, shows up in this part of the organizational features of Lightroom. So let's turn those filters back off and you can use so many different things with the spray paint can. It's a really fast way to organize your photographs if you want to use flags, ratings, metadata, whatever you want to do. Really, really awesome way to go through and edit all of those photographs and organize them into folders that you want to use to go through later and quickly go through your Lightroom workflow. Thanks so much guys for watching these 10 Lightroom tips that you may have never heard of before. I hope these are useful to you as you go through and edit your photographs and spend time organizing, editing them in your, in your workflow and exporting them maybe into a web file as well. If you like this video, if you found it useful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and hit the thumbs up for the like. Thanks so much guys. Leave comments below of other things that you may wanna learn in Lightroom.